grace and peace to you in the name of our almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In March of 2020, as all of us here know, the coronavirus started its sweep through our country and every country. Our daily life changed in every regard. In order to contain the virus, again, as we all know, we couldn't be with one another like this. We couldn't be with one another as we normally are, and we didn't gather together as we normally do. We stayed in our homes and worked and went to school, everyone except our essential workers, like healthcare and food and delivery workers. Schools, churches, school, governments, everything went virtual, and the rhythm of our daily lives changed. For so many in our country, including us here at Trinity, our lives changed on a daily basis as people we knew and loved got sick with the virus. And our lives changed as people we knew and loved died from the virus. It was such a hard and difficult time. It almost seems like a lifetime ago in a way, and it was just three years ago that we were in the middle of it all. Because it was so difficult in those times, and because it could be so bleak, the actor John Krasinski started a new YouTube series to try and bring some joy and levity to people's lives in those dark days. Many of you might know John Krasinski as one of the actors who was on The Office, that famous series that has a resurgence now, and a lot of our youth actually watch this show now. And he's been in a lot of movies and series since then. So with the world upside down due to the virus, he started a YouTube series, you might know this, called Some Good News. And it was for short, SGN some good news. And he would appear with a suit at a desk in his home with a sign that was made by his daughters <laughs> that is in markers SGN, and he would come on and film a little 15 or 20 minute segment bringing good news because we really needed it. So as you know, if you know this actor, he's very good natured and has real, real positive energy about him. And in his first episode on March 25th, 2020, he led in with these words, we're going through an extremely hard time, but there is still good news to report, namely the heroism of the global healthcare community who are literally putting their lives on the line without expecting a thank you. He then went on to say that the thank yous came anyway, and he shows a video montage. I, I encourage you to, you can Google it, you'll find it right away. He shows a video montage of all of these scenes from around the world of people pouring out into streets or parking lots of hospitals to show their thanks. You might have been one of those people, right? To show their thanks to the healthcare workers. So there was, um, in Spain, he showed a video shot of um, emergency vehicles, police, and ambulances with their lights on, yelling and cheering and honking in London, in New York, of people in their apartment buildings turning on and off their lights at night and cheering from their balconies all to give the hospital workers nearby that lift they needed to say thank you to them. Now, I had watched this during the pandemic years ago, and then I watched it again just a few days ago as I was preparing this sermon. And as I watched the video this week, I asked myself, why exactly is the outpouring of thanks good news? Now, that might seem kind of an obvious question, but just think about it for a minute. Why is that classified as good news? Sure, it's heartwarming. It made me feel good watching it. My act actually, my, my eyes teared up in my office as I sat there watching that and reliving those moments. I, too, had been one of those people, you know, out with pots and pans saying thank you. But why did Krasinski include this in his show, Some Good News? Why was people coming out to say thank you together, good news? He never explained why it was good news. And as I sat there thinking about it, I think that at its root, the reason it's good news is because it showed that we weren't alone. We might have been in our own little silos of our homes, right? We might have been separated in almost every regard, but we came together to say thank you. 
the good news is that we were still together in some way. We were still finding ways to be together. We weren't alone. And good news like that is powerful. News that even when you might feel alone, you're not. Because look, we're all here. Look at the flashing lights. Hear the banging pots and pans and the people cheering. Today's gospel is from the very beginning lines of the gospel of Mark, as I said before reading it. And as you might have noticed, Mark uses the good words, good news, to introduce the book he's written. The first line, again, this is what it reads, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, it's actually not technically a sentence for you grammar people out there. You've noticed there's no verb. There's no action word. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's jolting. (laughs) It's almost that the action is in the person of Jesus Christ. So from the get-go, Mark lets us know who this book is about. It's about Jesus, who is the Christ, the Son of God. Then he lets us know what this means for you, the reader. Well, it means good news for you, dear reader. It's good news, like in a newspaper might tell you some good news. So that's the who and the what, right? But why? Just like we ask why was it good news in the, in the example of the video of people saying thank you. Why is this good news? Well, you've got to keep reading. Mark's a writer after all. And he wants you to keep reading his gospel. So you've got to read on to know why Jesus is good news for your life. And if you do read on, you'll see that Mark's good news is that God is doing a new thing in Jesus Christ. That God's kingdom, God's good news era, if you want to call it that, God's good news era is here now in our midst in Jesus Christ. Now to understand why exactly that's a good thing, yeah, you've got to keep reading in Mark. And we'll be making our way through this book for this whole entire church year. But a first important answer comes in the rest of the text of our gospel from Mark today with John the Baptist. You see, John the Baptist is a prophet. In the great line and tradition of the Old Testament, the Hebrew prophets, John tells the people what God is up to. He gets them ready. And specifically for John, he gets them ready for the good news of Jesus. He tells the people they don't have to go to the temple for forgiveness. Come to the river and be baptized and just confess your sin directly to God. Now that in its time would have been good news enough. (laughs) There was a lot of stuff you needed to do for forgiveness in that tradition long ago. And now John is preaching, just come out and confess. But the good news doesn't stop there. And if you kept reading along with me, the good news, the most surprising news, is there's someone coming. The one who is more powerful than I is coming after, after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I've baptized you with water, but he's going to baptize you with the Spirit. Now, it's very likely that the people who heard that had absolutely no idea what he was talking about. Absolutely no idea. We know, because we live on this side of Jesus' resurrection 2,000 years later, but they probably had no idea. What are you talking about? this power. What do you mean we need to treat him like a king and get on our knees? What do you mean we're going to get baptized with the Spirit? They couldn't have known what those things meant, but the common denominator before any of those is that someone is coming to do that. Someone is coming with power. Someone is going to baptize you with the Spirit. Someone deserves our reverence like a king. Some one. That is the message of John the Baptist. The one is coming. The good news of John the Baptist is that you and I are not alone. We might feel alone. We might seem alone. But John's message is that God comes for us. God is coming for you. The good news is that we have a God who wouldn't let us go. It's a message we need to hear. I need to hear it. Do you? I need to hear it. In a world that can feel so fractured politically, doesn't it? Come on. We are fractured politically. In a world where there's so much violence, so much unfairness, 
in a world that brings heartache, where illness of body or mind or spirit can make us not, can just make us feel like we're not ourselves. In a world where we feel unnoticed, in a world where we feel unappreciated, all of those realities can push us further and further into ourselves and further away from one another. On my way in to church this morning, um, as I was getting off the highway, I go past that office park with the giant, giant parking lot that mostly goes unused, um, except by flocks of Canadian geese from now and then, depending upon the season of the year. And this morning there was a, a couple of flocks in there when I saw them, they were all gathered together. And on the other side of the parking lot, another flock had gathered. I didn't see that flock, actually, at first, but I saw one lone goose all by himself. And he was standing there, and I was at the light. I couldn't turn. And I saw this goose, and I thought to myself, well, one lone goose, that's odd. That's strange. You never see a lone goose, really. And if you do, they're always trying to make their way back to a flock, usually. And in the time that I got the green light and took a right and made my way, as I came up um, parallel to him, I noticed, guess what that lone goose was doing? Taking a walk. And he was taking a walk to his flock. <laughs> right? He, he, the flock was there. I could see the flock now. He was slowly, I always wonder, why don't you just fly to your flock? But anyway, he was making his slow way over to join his flock. And of course, I had this sermon on the brain and thinking, we are not meant to be alone. <laughs> We're like geese, right? We need flocks. Loneliness is a problem. Each of us knows what it's like to feel alone. We all do in one way or another. The good news today is that you're not alone, and God just won't have it. The good news is that that God sends the one, the only one, who can make things right again. Nothing will deter God, my friends. Nothing will deter God. We hear that. Go back to the Isaiah reading today if you have a moment today. This is spoken to people hundreds of years before Jesus were born who had been exiled from the promised land, lived far away from their land. Hope had gone. And this text, in this text, God lets them know that God won't be deterred. Every valley will be lifted up. Every mountain will be made low. Uneven ground becomes level. Rough places made plain. And why is that? Because God's on the way. That's why God makes all that happen to get to you. To get to God's people. As one commentator puts it, it's like that old song by Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. I didn't do research on it, but I got to believe they wrote that with this in mind. <laughs> ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough. <laughs> there's no river. There's no valley. There's no mountain that's going to deter God from you. Like it or not, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. In this time before Christmas, brothers and sisters, in this time where our world feels so alone for a variety of reasons, the good news of Jesus' birth is that you are not alone. Jesus came to be one of us. He came to walk among us. He came to eat, eat breakfast. <laughs> he came to be happy. He came to be sad. He came to have friends. He came to go swimming. He came to go fishing. He came to sit with people who are sick. He came to cry when loved ones die. He came to get upset. He came to go to a cross for you and for me. And he came to make the tomb empty. He came to make the tomb empty, to free you, to live the kind of life that God has in mind for you. To put it simply, the good news of the manger is that we are not alone. God is with us. May the peace that passes all understanding guard our hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord.